Hi everyone and welcome to the Flat Back Floor podcast with me, Andy Maguire. Joining me is Demi Moss and Scott Eaglin and this is the first time we've been all together. Um, of course, uh, coronavirus has kept us apart. Thank God I ain't had to see him or him. But we are back together and we decided to do it from uh, Scott's house. We've been banging each other into each other's bubble, haven't we? Because it's just the type of friends we are. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. And we're in, we're in Scott's house. He's the first one to grow up and he's got his own house. So Thank congratulations, you. Scott. Thank you. Um, we can't start the podcast without mentioning because we are all Leeds fans. The sad uh, announcement today of uh, Jack Charlton uh, dying at the age of 85. Absolute Leeds legend. World Cup winner. And uh, yeah, what are your thoughts on that, Dave? It's sad news. It's, it's, sad, it's a sad, very, very sad news. It's, we've had a, a rough year as Leeds fans with um, mm-hmm. Norman and Trevor Cherry as well. And now. Big Jack as well. It's just just sad time, isn't it? Really. So I mean, he'd been he'd been poorly for a while, and he he'd, he'd had um he'd had a long illness, and I think he was suffering from dementia. He is eighty five. I mean, it's not like we're losing at least you know it's never good when we lose someone, but obviously at least he, he got to eighty five. It's just a shame though in the season that we we're, we're probably going to get promoted. Ninety nine point nine percent we're going to get promoted, and we've lost yeah. two or three you know legends in that time. Yeah, yeah, really yeah it's not been the greatest year, has it, for Leeds off the off the pitch in terms of Leeds legends. Um, well, how many appearances did he get, Jack Charlton? 700 and something it was, it was ridiculous, 770 odd, yeah. It's unbelievable to think about that now, nowadays, you know, we were just talking earlier about Rooney getting 700 mm. odd appearances, but Jack Charlton doing it all for one club. One club, and then what people forget about Jack Charlton is he had a lot more success in the management world as well, because he, he went Middlesbrough, um, Newcastle for a bit, but the, the thing that really propelled him was when he got the Republic, Republic of Ireland, Ireland job yeah. uh, back in 86. And he did wonders with that nation. He really brought a lot of players, and because of Jack's personality and what he'd won, he he got players to play for that country that maybe may not have. And he got them to he got that country dreaming of playing in finals that they were nowhere they were nowhere near really, weren't they? No, well he got he got them to 1994, didn't they? Yeah, 94. Eight, 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 now with Europeans, and then yeah, and then ninety and ninety four. Well, he would even qualify for ninety four. That's right. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, and he, he had some. I mean, they were they were talking about some stories about Jack Charlton. And obviously, you know, he was he was a character. He was that throwback era. But he, um, I think, the Republic of Ireland they give him freedom of the country and and whatnot. So, kind of two two nations mourning over Jack Charlton. But obviously, if you if you are in the footballing world, Jack Charlton was. A big presence, real big presence, and you got to remember he scored ninety six goals for Leeds. That's crazy. A central like defender. Like Sergio Ramos type record. Yeah, right? like I mean, that, actually, I was going to say that. Like people talk about Ramos, but probably one of the people that started the, the scoring. Def- I mean, Beckenbauer was a great footballer, but Jack Charlton for a goal, goal scoring, mm. like ninety odd goals. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, it's it's, it's unbelievable. So a really sad loss, uh, you know, with Jack Charlton. Uh, and all these fans, including us three, we send all our love to his family, and um, yeah, hope that that Leeds get promoted and we, we do him justice next year. Moving on uh, to Premier League with our first relegation, Norwich have, yeah. have gone. Uh, we all called that when we did our predictions last time. Norwich for you thoughts of them going? Uh, I think it would. It's been on cast for a long time. Never. I, th- I think it were inevitable. Yeah, but. Uh, I mean, they'll, I mean they'll, they'll make some money, they'll sell some of the good players, won't they? So we're on about this, yeah, won't they'll, 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 they'll go down, they might, have a, they might have another shot of it next year, you don't know, but it's just an hard league, but I think it will always be the person. person. Pookie stays or goes, he's nearly 30, he's, he's not going to go anywhere, is it? Unless, unless, unless a low Premier League team. Probably back to Celtic. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, the thing about Pookie is, he's, he's at that age where he, he he could get a move, but if he's if he's going to be down there, he might, he'll probably score goals down in the championship. He, he would prove to be a cracking free agent uh, when they got him. He had a good start to the season, didn't he? For Norwich, he, he yeah. hasn't, and he hasn't scored in that, that was thirteen games today uh, that he'd not scored. It was on the card that they were going. I think Daniel Farker knew that they were going to go down. He played a team today that finished the championship season. Oh, they, okay. He played the first team today, which were. Uh, Bit of a stat there, bit of a John Watson stat. But uh but we knew they were gonna go. But on the flip side, West Ham. This guy said that West Ham were gonna go. Um and Michel Antonio has scored four goals today. So you know the world of football since coronavirus has uh I've, I've got I've got to say that I really didn't fancy West Ham to stay up at all. I thought, you know, coming back from lockdown and I didn't think they'd have the motivation to stay up. But never down Moyes. Yeah, I, down I, Moyes. I, I no, thought boys with with, with them. That's what you two said, yeah. Yeah, it's the Moyes yeah. effect. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Moyes effect, I think. And that Chelsea result, that's a big result. Big result, that, yeah. Up, and 
the thing with Moyes as well, he, he's just got that little bit of grit. You could see we're frustrated in some of the games that they have dropped points and stuff. But just on paper, they've got the players to get themselves out of it. And a couple of them players have stepped up. Antonio has been unplayable since he since the restart. He's bullied. Um, I thought the, the Chelsea game were good. We haven't seen the goals today because we, as we started the podcast, we just got the... Um, the score through that he'd scored four goals but I'm guessing he was man of the match uh, today but um, West Ham it's funny with West Ham because I've got Yarmolenko he's 30 years old Mark Noble's 33 uh, it's uh, not grass is very hard. yeah it's not Philippe Anderson it seems like he's got the talent but I don't think he wants to be at West Ham where did West Ham go we know what they're like with the owners but what do they, what do they need like, what is their what is their aim in life I mean what they, <laughs> what they needed to do like, what they needed to do was not leave up to bad yeah um, but in terms of what they, I don't know what they need. I mean, they they spent hundreds of millions, didn't they, over the last couple of years? Mm-hmm. Probably Anderson, Yarlenko, um, spent them on Hernandez. Um, I don't know where they go. They're going to be another team that are probably going to go through a transition period. Um, I can't see Moyes staying again. I'm going to say, do, you, do they keep Moyes? Or? No, I don't think so. I don't think so. But I hope they don't gamble on another manager like um, Pellegrino. Like, yeah, uh, Pellegrino. I, I would hope that they go for like a younger, younger English manager. Mm-hmm. Anyhow. I don't know. I mean, we're going to get on to Bournemouth in a bit. Um, yeah, West. What, what do you think for West Ham? I, I, I think it's, it's a big job, isn't it? It's, uh, it is a big job. And the, are the owners going to spend much more money if they don't if they don't recruit carefully? Get a, if the boys don't stay, get a, a manager who's going to hurt from the could the could go down in the near future. To be honest with you, but it's a, it's a big big overall that will need positives. Though Bowen looks a great player. It looks like he's coming yeah, and taking to Premier yeah. League. Um, I don't think he's not going to be. I don't think he's one of them players that's going to do it all himself. But maybe they, they need to buy maybe a bit younger and take a chance because they seem to buy like you know Jan Malenko was a good player at thirty and they got him when he was like 28, 29 And maybe they need to buy some another player like a Bowen who was just coming. Yeah, maybe time. yeah, maybe so. They did same with um, who was it Ryan Fredericks at some right Yeah, well he came from Championship as well. Um, we've got it right in uh, in goal with with uh, Fabianski. Um, it's just the defence. I'll tell you who might be a good player play. who's going down, who I, you know I rate, I think maybe like a Tom Campbell. Yeah, yeah. Might be a yeah, good yeah, player for like that. Bit of energy in midfield. You know, he's, yeah, he's, Noble's, um, he's 33. 33 you, can't, yeah. you, can't, you know, the, the, the ter- you know when Noble in, in the middle of that pitch, it, it all kind of goes a bit soft. Well, he even, said, like he, grit. He even said it in, 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 in the interview that there were um, other players needed to step up because when he would play, he can't do it on the pitch. Yeah. Basically, he went right in on I think it was before or before. On, if I remember what I mean, he Good, good on uh, you know Antonio. I mean, he stepped up. He said, I mean, I, th- I never think he really puts a bad performance in. Just probably weren't like the most naturally gifted striker because he, he kind of plays out wide one week, then they stick him up top for the last fifteen yeah. minutes. They don't have Carroll, so yeah, I think they're, they're on a little bit of a rebuild out there. It's going to be interesting the management side of it. Yeah, if, if Moyes or, or to get someone else in. Yeah, like I say, I think if, if Moyes was to go, I think he does go. I think they should go for somebody maybe younger in English. Um, and then maybe go for a younger squad as well. You know, like you say, they've got so much experience in there, maybe just not as much youth as it. Do you think if, if, if just say for instance, Brentford don't go, you're going to take a chance like Thomas Franks? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah that'd be a shout. Yeah, that'd I be a shout. I think they'll take a chance on any of their front three. Like yeah. Ben Ramon, Wermore, yeah. or Watkins, somebody like that. Yeah. Just a bit of energy. Well, I yeah, I, mean, I like Watkins. I mean, I think again, though, it could be one of these. Until you see a player from the Championship do it in the Premier League, like, mm-hmm. again, we always say about Dwight Gale, uh, probably Chopper were up there, maybe David Nugent. Bothroyd. You know, yeah, Bothroyd. yeah, Bothroyd were another, you know, example. But he's still playing, isn't he? Yeah, I think he's at Philippines. Yeah, Philippines are somebody's bizarre. He's forty-eight. I mean, Especially you know, he's, yeah, he's such a, a three, three-year deal over there. But um, <laughs> uh, so we all agree, West Ham Moyes are going to sign a three-year deal, and they probably won't get any players. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and it'll be the same old. Sorry, um, sorry, West Ham and the fans. Whole but messy debacle about his contract is obviously because that's West Ham. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, if you could keep doing that more while we're on, you know. <laughs> yeah, just, sorry, everyone. No. Um, so listen, we're going to go on to tomorrow's game, which is North London Derby. We were saying that like this this game now, it, we're not as excited to watch this. Obviously, there's no fans, so I think that kind of takes the edge away from a derby. But yeah. Arsenal and Tottenham, they're one point between each other. But it's not like they're fighting for Champions League even. You know, it's like eighth and ninth, ninth mm-hmm. and tenth. That'll push your up a league. Yeah, out, yeah. I, I don't know. I mean. I, Spurs have obviously uh, been in the Champions League. I think this will be asked if they don't get in the Champions League this time. That's five years out of the Champions League. 
So that's that's quite a you know when you think they did seventeen straight years or whatever it was yeah. or, or under Wenger, which was you know I think it was good, but it was funny in it the cray for that now again just to get back into that Champions yeah. League. Yeah. Uh, but Spurs Arsenal. First of all, who do you think is going to win? Uh, Arsenal, in my opinion. Arsenal. Is it at Arsenal or at Spurs? It's at Spurs. I don't know it's, 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 it's at Spurs. Fans, probably draw. I, probably. I, I think draw yeah, today. Draw or Arsenal. Uh, Harry Kane usually scores against Arsenal. I think he scored seven goals already in his short yeah. career against them, really, in the, in the grand scheme of things. Um, uh, but Arsenal being boosted. Sacco signed a new contract. Martinelli signed a new contract. Um, Zach is playing quite well. I, I actually think if... I, I do say draw, but it wouldn't surprise me if this Arteta team, they seem to have got them playing, they've got a bit more about them. If Louise uh, plays, you know, how he how he can do every one every ten games, then they might, they, you know, they can definitely get something, but... Um, He's got youth on here, Arteta, mate. He's got yeah, youth. absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, Willock... Martinelli, you know Eddie. Of course, we had Eddie at Leeds, but you know he's been he's been trusting Eddie. Uh, obviously, he's um, he's banned now for three games, but yeah, I mean he's building something. What do you think about it so far? As a, I think he's he's changed him a little bit. I mean, there's been still some performances which you're going to expect, which are true enough. But recently, this year of calendar year, anyway, he's been. I think been mentally he's changed. Him. Yeah. I think I think he's he's given him a bit more grit. Um, I mm. think they were they were lacking that under Emery. Well. I think Emery Emery had ten plans for. Each half, and he couldn't. I don't think the players knew, but I think Arteta's. I don't know if he's given them more grit because that Man City performance weren't. Didn't show anything. Yeah, well, it? yeah. Uh, so I think he's. I think Man City though, it's a different ball game. Like, yeah, they've been, been. They've been super. Five, what, it, five nil, four nil, three nil, they four nil, five nil, or something. The, 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 the even against Brighton. Against Brighton. Well, they were awful. Yes, they were awful yes, games. Yes, I don't, I don't think he's given them more grit. I just think. Um, but you see a change. Yeah, I see a change. He's just got just got on playing better football. You know, I think. Historically, Arsenal the last sort of eight, ten years have been absolutely awful at that, and I can't see that changing anything any time in the near future unless they make some big signing over the summer. But he's using the forward players that they've got minus Ozil, mm-hmm. um, and using it to their advantage. But big signings in some of them, Arsenal. I think that the I think the link with Thomas Partey, um, it seems to have been linked with him though for a couple of years now, but. I mean, we said it. We, we said it uh, that they needed a spine. We said that David Luiz was shocking, and then he signed a contract day after. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. you know, I, I still don't. I mean, you said Zach is playing quite well. I still don't think he. No, I don't think he's gone for the up. No, I agree. And he wouldn't have been given captain's armband with a the crowd there, would he? Because he got he got given captain's armband in the last couple of games. Well, yeah, I, I think he's come back. I mean, fair play to him. You've got to give credit where credit's due. He, he could have it could have really imploded, and I think he's. I think he's got his head down and he's come back and I think he's tried uh in the sense of trying his best, but I think he's I think he's come back a bit stronger when I think no one thought he was gonna come back. Mm. And I think everyone was like, he's dead, he's buried. I didn't like Ozil. I think Jacques has shown a bit more grit than Ozil shown. And yeah, people might yeah. say Ozil's not been given a chance, but Ozil's been given four years. He hasn't been good since his first two seasons at Arsenal, yeah, has he? When he had Alexis and that. Um moving on to Spurs. They've, they've looked woeful. That, that was the first time no one's had a shot at Bournemouth since 2015 the other night. Wow. And that's a start. Yeah. I'm firing out today, boys. I've been, I've been <laughs> getting my uh, little books. Like, but, you know. It, that's typical Mourinho, that, though, isn't it? You know, against a team that you probably expect them to hit three or four against, you don't have a shot on target. Um, I don't know where Mourinho's going with Spurs. I don't know. I don't, I don't, I don't like Spurs are going to be with Spurs. Yeah, dead wood, but he's got a lot of dead wood. Yeah, he's got a lot of dead wood. He's got a lot of again older players that have probably done as as much as they can with Spurs. Um, did you see the interview that he, he came on after after the game and he said um, something like people in power at Spurs can't take criticism? Oh yeah, yeah. Well, that's classic he's, Mourinho. That yeah, is, you know, he's, he's, he's like yeah, you know. These statements that make you think, oh, who is it? Is it is it Kane? Yeah. Is, it, is it Daniel Levy? Who's who's on about that? If I if I were Harry Kane or even Son, I'd be wanting to jump ship. But so who's on about that? Who's, who's well, we only ever really that? see Levy, don't we? Yeah. We we don't really, you know, it's not like Sullivan, Gold, and Brady, and even like Man United when it were Glazers. You wouldn't ever see Daniel Levy in that stand by himself. So for me, it's got to be a dig at Levy. He's got and he's got to say, we need money. I think it's I think it's a dig at Harry Kane. 
Really? I, I, I don't know about that. I think it's... Because have you sending him to high horse? It's either. like when Harry Kane or somebody like an Alderweireld or a Vuitton. I would say you know, maybe them been two. been there years. I would say them who two. Who probably you would think won't want to take any criticism because they're going towards their end of their career. But we don't want to take any criticism. And then Mourinho's coming in giving them some sort of... Depends what you mean by hierarchy though. You know, like, is he on about team or is he on about that backroom staff? Like, because we all know you, Levy as a businessman is, is unbelievable. The stadium and that... And he dug his heels in with, um, well, with Alderweireld. I mean, say he dug his heels in, they give him the contract that I think he wanted in the end. But he should have gone. Should Alderweireld and Patonga, like uh, yeah. thirty-one, might th- I can't believe they're the other best that they've got. Aren't they? I don't know. How, how often do we say? Yeah, they're, they're better than that. What is it? Point one, one point or whatever. Yeah, but the, the, the Sanchez, they've got um, Sanchez, Sanchez who, yeah. who were in, and he's been playing Eric Dyer at the back. Yeah, but, but he, I mean, you're saying that the best, but Marino obviously doesn't, so he's not in there. So what you're saying could possibly be right. Yeah, but how often do we say that? You know, when teams reach a final or they reach or they win something, what's the hunger like after? And there's just been nothing from Spurs in Champions League final, and particularly from all the players yeah. like we're talking like um, like Alba There's just been nothing really from him this season. I mean, the f- like Danny Rose as well. You know, the Danny f- Rose, yeah. nothing the, from him this the, season. He's gone on loan. He played well at Newcastle, didn't he? Yeah, he has played alright. Yeah. Yeah. But I'm not being funny, you know, you try and make the most out of it because he's better than Ben Davis. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're not fan of him. Then, I, I, then Serge Aurier, right back. He goes, oh, ben, ben Serge Aurier. Aurier. <laughs> I'm not a fan of him either. Oh, I God. think Ben Davis is like that, uh, for me, is like that middle of the road defender. He would be part of your squad, he'll do you a good job. But don't really where, do much. Where Spurs are wanting to go, like that. And Serge Aurier, I mean, uh, his position, <laughs> I can't. As a footballer, I th- you know, sometimes he does some great balls and you think, well, do you know what? If he maybe played with a three at the back and you had Serge Aurier, because he's going to leave you. Yeah. You know, if you're a central defender, you go, Serge. Like, you know, it's like yeah. it's like the Travolta gift. It's like, yeah. where is he? You know, and he's, he's only there. And against Sheffield United, absolutely awful. Oh, it was awful. I mean, they were all at fault for that. That 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 goal yeah. was. That I mean, it was a good goal on for for Sheffield's point of view. But if you were a manager watching <laughs> that that yeah. defending, especially someone like Mourinho who's so drilled. You know, you yeah. hear that, that 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 Chelsea team in 05 defending together and attack together, but at the minute there's a there's a real uh, what, what's the word? There's no co-ops. There's no the disconnect. Yeah, there's a massive disconnect, and like, Harry Kane up there must be thinking, you know what? Same with Son, you know. Uh, I, mean, I really like Son. I think. He's, oh, he's bro. We, we, I like I like Son. So yeah, like Lucas, Lucas Moore. I mean, you know, if they I, want to win things, they need to move on. Kane and. I mean, Kane does Kane go? Kane does Man City, yeah. Man U, Man City. He's not Man United. It's only really Man U. He won't go to City. He won't go to City because he's not that type of player, is he? You know, look at Guardiola. Look, look at no, I yeah, look, at, look at Aguero. Look at Gabriel. Gabriel Jesus. Jesus. They're not. They're not. They're not, they're not, they're not Harry. Kane. Harry, Kane, Harry, Harry Kane could play for any club. Yeah, I think any good. club. Hey, I'm going to throw it out there. I'm no. Real Madrid. No, no. Firmino's been shocking this season. He scored eight goals. He's not scored at Anfield. Yeah, but I think. Is your linchpin up front? You're telling me that you wouldn't replace... Now, Firmino and Harry Kane, you're right about City, but I think Kane and Firmino are the same player. No. Firmino, and Firmino does a lot of hard work. No. I'm not saying that he's not a good player. Yeah, he's he links up the play great, but Man United's front three have scored well, more than Liverpool, the one about Werner, uh, Timo Werner at one point, weren't they? Yeah. Well? So maybe instead they go for they go for Kane. Listen, why not? They've got the money. If he'd got it, because Liverpool... Uh, they've, got, they've got the money. They'll go. He would go to Liverpool. Okay. So it was, he won two on again. He won two on. Hundred percent. No, he won two. They're, they're won two. Uh, no, because they're 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 any team. Look yeah, at Firmino. Like like look at look at Firmino, Salah, and Mane. They are all interchanging. All you know, Firmino could be out wide right. He could be out wide left. Mane and uh, Salah. They're all interchanging. No, he okay. plays up top. He, put, no, he doesn't though. Yeah, Kane no, doesn't. He drops Kane drops deep. Yeah, he he drops deep a lot. Yeah, and I tell you what, he get he gets the ball sometimes. And he's on where the centre circle is, and he likes to do that reverse pass, and then he gets himself going. Well, for me, that's what Firmino does. Do you think he's? So, uh, do you think he plays for Real Madrid or Barca? Who Kane? Kane. Real. Good enough. Real. Benzema. Gone. I think Barca. I think he plays for Barca. Yeah, but but I, even if he does, I mean, maybe Real Madrid probably maybe does suit more. Um, Kane, but I think if you play for Barca, for me they play like they play like Liverpool. No, he won't go. He won't go to Barca. No, but, yeah, but he wouldn't suit Barca. Barca. No, he wouldn't suit Barca. <laughs> no, he wouldn't. <laughs> he could play for any team. Harry Kane's in. If you're listening, <laughs> you know, he could genuinely Barca. play for any team. I, I think he could play for any team. He I could, think, but he won't suit Barca. I still think he'd suit Liverpool. I think he'd suit Liverpool. I personally do. Same like when Ibrahimovic went to Barca, didn't he? No, no, he's got goals there. Yeah, I'm going to say he's also got 17. He's got goals there, but he won't. You know, you want their, their type of player. 
Yeah, but was that more of the Messi thing? I mean, Messi signed him for Sunderland. Yeah, so, <laughs> you know, <laughs> with Messi signed it because he's contract, that, you know what I mean? Yeah, that, nailed on for Amazon Prime documentary. That way the last Yeah, yeah when, <laughs> when he walks in and <laughs> Messi goes, are we you guys? You know, it's like uh, Julio Giordio. Uh, from, <laughs> <laughs> no, but I, listen. What? I, you know that? What? Is that about Barca? Yeah. I'm just thinking. I think he could play for anybody. I think oh. Alison. I think uh, any good striker would, would would fit in a good team. I think there's better fit. Any team, I, any team would take him. I think. I think you're telling me on the end of a Kevin De Bruyne, Ke- Harry Kane would score you 25 goals a season. He would. He Probably would. He would. But he won't. He won't suit Man City. So, Guardiola won't go. Guardiola won't go for that type of striker. All right. Okay. That's fine. Well, well, listen, we have a big. We have, we do have a big say in Harry Kane's future. So you know we can. Uh, we'll, we'll cross that bridge when he does move. Yeah. Um, so you think. Do you think draw? Or did you think draw? I so said Arsenal win. Oh, you think okay. Arsenal win? I think draw. I think it's going to be a bit of one one. So we'll uh, we'll, we'll see. Where Spurs three nil, Melvin. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, nailed on. Game yeah. abandoned. Yeah, yeah. what a pitch. Yeah, remember <laughs> it's a Soko hat trick. Um, so moving up, listen, we're going to talk about VAR because there were some interesting. Uh, oh God, VAR. Yeah, Sorry. now he, yeah, Scotty Glenn is a big advocate of VAR. He um, he loves it. Uh, obviously, you can sense by the tone that he doesn't. There was penalty decisions. There was everything we bar this week, that, and 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 apparently, three or four de- decisions were wrong. So, penalties. You saw the the Fernandez one at Man United. That was a penalty. It probably was a penalty. It was a penalty. Yeah, it was a penalty. I can't believe um, people are saying that it was. No, I agree. It was, was it was it soft and a little bit. Even was it a penalty? It was a penalty. It was a penalty. I, I'm on the. I. I can see why it Pablo Hernandez like running into the area like that. And, he, and, and we've got to remember. <laughs> <laughs> what you've got to remember is that when Fernandez puts his foot on the ball, as soon as he shields that ball, he's, he's, trying, to that move. he's trying to do that move where he puts his foot on it and then turns. turns. Around. I don't. Yeah. I don't think. I think that I could have gone either way. I don't think that looked most contentious. No, I agree. I agree. Yeah. I agree. But it it, 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 was, a it was a penalty. It was a penalty. Um, but yeah, VAR with the uh, ward. Was it the Ward Prowse penalty? Oh, yeah, it's oh, it's shocking. Yeah, what about in general? No, no, that that, that, no, deci- that decision. But that decision, he didn't touch him. He's going down, and then he goes into the player, and then he touches the touch legs as he's going down. It's, it's just, it's just disgusting, it's disgusting. I got me in mind, man. I'm not even an Everton or Southampton fan. But you two like that? You two like that? I no, I mm. like that, but it's been used too much. When I say the letter of the law. You know, we've got. To, I'm, I'm talking common sense law. Like you can't have an arm offside because that is gaining no advantage. If someone's foot is, is a, a foot in front of them, well then you've got to lead start on them. If someone's head, you can score with your head. For them moments, yeah, I do. But the Vardy incident, you know, the other night. Um, I mean, you are talking it, against Arsenal. Yeah, against Arsenal. I mean, I watched a little bit of AFTV and they were absolutely the ball turned when he, he just touched. Um, I think it was Perez's foot and then. Look, I mean, you couldn't tell them, but I watched that live and I went on like YouTube straight after and I was looking at it and I, I couldn't see that little touch. And Vardy's head, I mean, it must have literally been one of his little spikes that were yeah. offside. I mean, I, I, for me, you can't give that as a uh, offside. You, you just can't. Has VAR improved our game more? No. If, we get to the, to the, if it's not working for me, then if, it, if people no. think it, it can get and help. It's, imp- it's improved our game for the people who wanted decisions 100% yeah, spot on that's because it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. a lot of the decisions have been spot on but do people want a game that's you know half a foot offside or you know an arm offside no there should be daylight for me it should be daylight again. no but and, well, you, you don't like yeah, the fact that the, the goal celebrations it takes away people now are scoring and immediately not does. celebrating we saw it with the West Ham the suit check yeah, remember for his, for his goal that stood, he didn't, he didn't celebrate. celebrate. No, yeah, he didn't celebrate. And, and for a defender, see, he might not score many. So yeah, he'll you'll celebrate. See, you'll see that more and more often, and you know you'll see a 90th minute winner. You know, leads, I, leads away at I think everyone. You know. I think everyone will celebrate 90th minute. Yeah, minute but, winner, but, then, but there will always be that, you know, that little thought in the back of your mind going, "Oh, is it going to?" You know, even if you think you're marginally onside, mm. oh, this could be, you know, this could be chalked off. So then you have to celebrate again when it gets confirmed. I just never thought we'd watch a, a game of football where, you know, we've got tiny, tiny margins. I just think if you're going to watch a replay, a, 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 VAR, a VAR replay, and from that first look, you can't see any clear and obvious errors. Like, that's what they said that there was going to happen yeah, yeah. at the beginning of the season. If you can't see it on that first view, go with whatever the referee What about says. a time limit, a 30-second time limit? No, no, because 30 seconds is a long time in football. 
Yeah, well, there's like there's one three, though, mate. There's, there's like challenges that go down. Anyway, Thirty though. seconds is a long time. It, you know, if there's three or four VAR reviews in a half, that's sort of a two two plus minutes. Yeah, I mean, uh, apparently they're doing the handball thing. That's going to be there's going to be a tweet next year with the handball thing, which I think everyone kind of agrees with. But even then, no, I, I get it, you know, I get it. But I think, do you think this is a five year thing, and then they might get rid of it? Well, I think it's here to stay. The VAR should have never come in unless it was perfect, and it's not perfect, so but, get rid of it. But we argued, didn't we? World it was fine in the World it Cup. Great. Mm. No, but there was two or three errors. Okay. There was two or three. But when there's were... when there's how many matches, you can, you can maybe deal because there's errors in football games pre VAR. But so in the Premier League this year, it's every week. Yeah, if, if there's decisions week. like penalties and stuff like that, you know where it can be subjective with different opinions, they should just say to them, there's a possible possible infringement or whatever, go on, quick look at monitor. Let the referee yeah. make the ultimate decision. And that game the other night was the first time yeah. this year that a referee well, has let, gone to the... Let, make the, the referee account. make that decision. Mm. Help VAR to help him to say it could possibly, but you go see what you think. If you're gonna, because it's too, it's too subjective. Some of uh, and the thing about it is, we're talking too much about it rather than the footy. Yeah. And, that, yeah. that, and that's where the dis- what, that's what we're not. What they should do is, if it's gonna go to VAR, and let's let's recognise that every goal is is reviewed by VAR. Yeah. Every goal. Build up. Yeah. Every goal is 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 reviewed by VAR. So if VAR doesn't see anything on the first view, they should say to the ref, look, ref, can't see anything obvious. I'm happy to go with your decision. Mm-hmm. Or they say, you know, it's a bit contentious. You might want to have a look. But that's only on the the you know the video assistant mm-hmm. referee's first view. We're taking two or three minutes to look at a decision. You, you can't be ruling goals out after two or three minutes because after two or three minutes, if you can't make a decision, you're probably going to be debating about it for the next two or three weeks. That's true. That's true. That's true. Yeah. Well, he said, uh, "And Kitty got sent off." Yeah. When I looked up at work, he looked at live score. He said he was booked on the thirty-second minute. And then big time it all reviewed, he got sent off. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And we, and we all looked at that, and it was a sending and off. The, th- it, the thing is, with football, lads, every, well, 95% of decisions, I probably say 99% of decisions, are subjective. Mm-hmm. You know, you might say it's a foul, I might not say it's a foul. The only definite thing in football that is 100% correct is when it crosses the line. Isn't it? Yeah, yeah, and that's no, the, yeah, And that's, yeah, the, and that's yeah, the one thing yeah, that we okay. thought, and it yeah. doesn't delay the game. Yeah. It's an immediate decision. And <clears throat> I've got to be honest, I was, I was not a fan of that when it came in, the goal line. Technology. No, but it works. Yeah, it? it's immediate and it help and it's there straight away. Goal. And that was the thing you see. If you weren't a VAR fan and then you've seen it over the last couple of seasons in the Premier League, it's not made to change your mind. In fact, it's probably put you more on the front. And we've even seen ex-pros that are like on TalkSport and anywhere saying that the one did it, Danny Murphy was a big advocate of it. Now he can't stand it. Against, didn't he? So now you Danny know, Mills as well. That's yeah, Danny Mills is another one. So apparently, if you go Danny, you don't like. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> VAR was up there, but anyway, it, it, it's going to be. It's going to be. The, Decisive. There's going to be small changes. We're going to have to go again next year. Just b- before we before we go on to our little Champions League slot that we're going to talk about, I just want to quickly talk about Leeds. Just because we haven't had any of our dealings down in the Championship and stuff like that. Um, we won quite convincingly the other day. It was superb. one of it was it was superb. superb. And Leeds Stoke were bad, but we were we were. And actually, you say so bad. bad. First ten minutes, he actually did look quite up for the fight. But then mm. once Leeds got that foothold of the yeah. game, we we I mean, they looked like they were chasing shadows, didn't they? I yeah. mean, it was it, we were it were a big pressure game as well, and that's different between last season. You had a pressure game last season with Team to crumble, but that were a emphatic one. And the, it wasn't just emphatic. The goals we scored were all fantastic. Quality, and and I, we all have it. Even the most diehard Leeds fan, Bamford has been a, a, a is a. Is he an enigma? Is that the word? But like you know, he's, he's we want him to do well. He shows sometimes that he's got the capabilities, but then you know he misses easy. Ch- but I've got to say, we're unplayable. Yeah, he deserved he, his goal on Earth. They were unplayable the other day because they were. It were really, really good. It were really good. Okay. Everything about his game were good. I mean, I've always, superb. I've always said I'm a big fan of Bamford, and I even know they're on his team. Yeah. They, were, they were getting much criticised. Um, but you see, the last game we played well. I can't criticise him at all. The, the best we've seen of Bamford this season is when he had um, a striker on the bench who was you know, willing to take his place, like yeah. Nketiah. Um, and obviously since Nketiah's gone, there's no, been no real pressure on him at all. Mm. So, I, you know, if me and you were a striker and we're on the pitch and there's nobody to back you up or nobody to take your place, you're going to be thinking, oh, well, if I play I'll start good this week, I'll start next week anyway. Mm. Um, but yeah, great performance from Leeds. Yeah, we're, didn't we're, even look like they've got our second gear. No, and then Hernandez came on, did what he does. 
I mean, best play in the league. It was well, there were thirty, best play in the 30 passes for that for that goal. Um, and uh, again, Bamford's move would have been for that. Yeah. Yeah. He took two defenders. He obviously had an and say, "Leave this, I'm having it." And he just stroked the ball on, and it was that Premier League class. Next year, um, you know, if we get up, I am going to say if just you know, it looks nailed on, but. Um, you keep him, don't you, and I'm there if we can, and just and, and Fernandez. Yeah, like, oh, yeah he's yeah. definitely got a season in Premier. That's what I mean. You know, like if you get twenty games, if you get twenty games, if you get twenty games, out of Hernandez, if you get twenty games out of Hernandez, he's a game changer. He's a even if he either comes on starts well and we have to drag him off 50, 60 minutes because his body, that's fine. Or you one nil up and you two nil up against an Everton, yeah. and you just need someone to who's had he's that Premier League out. experience. He's, I think he'd be fantastic. He's not, and it's not even his, if his age because. His passes in it, it's just his passing. Yeah, I mean, he's, I don't think he was ever known as a, as a sprinter, no, box, I don't, box, I, don't, I, don't, I don't think he'll be a standout player in the Premier League by, no. by, by any means. I don't think he'll look, you know, class above that. the quality. It's, it's a huge <coughs> job, but he's been there as well. Yeah, but he's been there, you know, Valencia. he's played at a much higher level, he's played for Spain. Uh, he's David Silver's roommate, look how well Valencia. Silver at the, I mean, yeah. all right, I know Silver's done it constantly for 10 years in the Prem, but, you know, um, you know, we can still see in this league. David Silver is a little right and he gets in there, great technique and, and Andes is our little man that can make that can make things happen. Click, thirty. Premier League? No. Not for me. I, I'm not I'm not feeling click in Premier League. I think he's gonna get absolutely trounced. Yeah. Um what do you think? I think I'm not about selling him because I know well, I think he's a good, good squad player, I think. But if we can get someone in there that's I think obviously we're gonna have to add, but He's been a big, he's been an integral part of this season for us, but yeah, I think I think he will be a bit loyal to him. I think he might try and play him. He started every game and he under yes, else. Exactly, yeah, and he were, at one point he, his career was over with us. That's true. His career sure. over, and he's, yeah. cool. he's and if it weren't for Forshaw getting injured when Bielsa first took yeah. over, he probably wouldn't have got a look in any. He? And he does. When we said this, that's if Bielsa stays, we'll quit. You know, if I mean, we don't know if Bielsa's going to stay, so you know we're going to have to we're going to have to just wait and see. But um, I, think he, I think he stays for one season. Okay, well. Well, we'll know. Listen, by this time next next Sunday, uh, well, it's Sunday now, but maybe by by next Sunday, hopefully, we'll be Premier League, and, and then we can look to the future. Right, back to Premier League and back to the top of the table in the Premier League. Liverpool and Man City are done. Champions League places. We find out whether Man City get the ban reduced down to a year or a final or two years. Um, but we're talking about fixtures. Steam is going to get it on his phone now. Leicester have dipped. Pulled out a couple of performances. They beat Palace, but they've drawn three. Did you say and lost? Mm. Lost one. Or drawn, two? They've lost two. I think one would have drawn three or two. Yeah. So it's it's not mm. the best form, but it's not like they've had a mass fall off a cliff. But Vardy yeah. scoring again. Vardy scoring again. Um, but they haven't been great since Christmas. They're, True. They, uh, no, we thought the break might do well. well. We thought the break might do well. But it, again, it just shows you how good they were prior to Christmas. Mm. You know that nine 0 thrashing against Southampton was. One of the best performances I've seen, I've seen in Premier League, to be honest. Mm-hmm. But since then, they've just sort of been a bit of a mixed bag, really. Um, I, I, they will finish at fifth at the very least, but they might just fall. Like I said, they might just fall away from. from Probably their next game. two games are there. I don't know what they're running. They play Man U on the last game so of the season. So what the, what's the, the next? The two? fixes are: they've got Bournemouth away this weekend. They'll beat Bournemouth. Sheffield United at home. They could be. Spurs away. Then, well, if I'm being honest, then it's the next two games for me. I'm going to put it out, I'm just going to call it. They'll beat Bournemouth. Wolves will finish on the same points as Leicester. And it'll go down goal difference. So, therefore, I'm guessing Leicester. I don't, I don't know what goal difference is, but I just want to say that. I, I think, think Wolves have scored goals in the Nets. I think Wolves. I think Wolves, I think Wolves catch them. The six, the six or seven points behind them. That's a big call. Yeah, I'm going to put it there. I'm going to do it. I don't think they will. I think Leicester, I think Brendan Rodgers is, is a bit more sturdy to, to get them over the line. Mm, um, he's a good man. I think they're falling the yeah. Man United on at the minute, though. You would fancy them too. Yeah, but by, by that Leicester Man United game, I think Man U will already be. Yeah. They'll be done. And I think that will be done for Leicester. I think it's these next two games. Yeah. Bournemouth are shocking. I think they'll beat Bournemouth. So, again, Bournemouth win that 3 0. And then, um, and then who, who do they play for Bournemouth? Uh, Sheffield United. If, if they can beat, if they can beat Bournemouth and Sheffield, yes, yes, it's Leicester. Yeah, it's Leicester. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, what's Wolves' is, uh, fixture? So Wolves, you've, they've got Everton at home this weekend. It's away, away to Burnley. Home to Palace. Oh. Away to Chelsea last game of the season. That's an harder running. 
Yeah, Burnley. Are, yeah, because Burnley are tough. Burnley are tough. They made a great out there. I see Wolves getting nine points for uh, uh, maybe mm. seven, maybe nine or ten points. Mm. I mean, you sit back in your chair, mate. You must disagree. I, I, I don't don't think, no, I don't think you know they're going to lose no, all no, four. No, 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 no. They pot- right, right. potentially, they potentially can can get nine points. But Burnley are a tough ass. Burnley can on the day grit and grind out results. Oh, and win, bit, yeah. You know. Uh, but Wolves, do you not ever back them not to score? Or like they, they, they're, they're so attacking. The, the games that have let Wolves down a little bit were at home to Arsenal away at Sheffield United. Yeah. Them both, they were big games for them, but I just think could have turned it around. I think, and I think could have think Leicester on that much of a slump. Yeah. Just, but you know, when you say that, I don't, like, yeah, they're right on a bit of a slump. But like Scott said, is it because they played so well? They've only lost two, drawn three, and won. And they got two. knocked out so, oh, as well, didn't they? Oh. Yeah. I, I, Maybe their season's fizzled out a bit, but again, it all goes down to the to the Man City as well with the Champions League. So yeah, so fifth place might. Even so fifth place yeah, might. Well, well, that's what I mean. I'm going. So Wolves. I'm going on the basis that Wolves finish. Wolves and Leicester finish same points on fifth and sixth. Maybe I'm hoping in an ideal scenario, <laughs> Man United finish fifth and then Man City get exonerated. Well, yeah, that, that's my ideal scenario. Yeah. But um, and the Ch- and, and Chelsea obviously Chelsea apart from that that slip up at West Ham. I think they're playing some good stuff. I'm a big fan of Pulisic. I love Pulisic. Don't I know. think he's just. I think he's just classy. He, he's for me going to be that Hazard type player. Go on, I was going to say comparing to Hazard, mate. Well, like, you can, look at the minute Hazard's had a better career than Pulisic, but I was never Hazard's biggest fan. I think sometimes he went missing in games. Somebody sent me a thing on Twitter saying, "Oh, look at Hazard's you know goal record." Yeah, I don't think it's bad. I think he scored a lot of goals against the poorer teams that a player like him should have mm. got you know got rid of. But I think as a leader, I think Willian's been. I think Willian was a, is a better all-round player. Yeah, but um, I, I, I feel like we're Willian or Will I am. <laughs> he, um, I love that single that he's brought out. Yeah, yeah. Uh, really. <laughs> um, I, uh, I, I think that he's only increased his level of playing because he's out of contract at the end of the season and he's probably playing for a contract elsewhere. Well, I, apparently, I think I think he, he, he really likes playing for Lampard apparently, and he's going to sign. I like that. He's twenty. He's twenty-two. He's thirty-two. Um, he's got for me. He's got another couple of years. I mean, Pedro's going. <laughs> bless you. Thank you. Uh, Pedro's going uh, to Roma. Willian, I think, might stay because I think he might. I think he'll complement and help that team because they've got a lot of youngsters in that team. Uh, but they've got Timo Werner coming in. They've got the I forgot his name already. Zaya. Got him. <laughs> right, <laughs> him coming in. Uh, he looks a tidy player. I think there may be a defender away from. Maybe getting a knock into Chelsea and Liverpool. Yeah, maybe with Chelsea. Done well, Lampard first season with no money. They didn't really do well. No, he's, 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 he's done well. I think that there's still a fair whack behind top two. But if she, with the players coming, you never know. That Werner's a good player. Isn't Very he? good player. He's going to be even better. I think Abraham is, is even though he's, he's, we all thought he's, he's a good backup, backup but he's a good backup. He's still learning his trade. I don't think he'll go on loan anymore now. No. So I think. Up front, I think they're going to do quite well. I worry a and little that. bit in midfield and about at that. And when I've got, got a lot of good midfielders, though, haven't they? Yeah, and they've got to, the learning from the best, to be fair. Well, well Lampard, yeah, yeah, with Lampard. So. But I mean, with with Kante, I think if you play CDM, he's the best one in the in the world. That's why I just think at the back with Aspilicueta. I don't. I like Rudiger, but he's a bit rash. Sometimes. So it's Zoom, 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 Zoom was shocking that really yeah, it, it, Oh, terrible. Sometimes his decision making in there, but I think he can have some monster games. I think he's quite a I think he is quite a good. Christensen looks quite good when he when he plays, but again he had a shock with the other Yeah, I think Alonso um, went, went off hands, but I don't I think we, Leicester we don't really like will him. sign Ben Chilwell yeah. to replace Alonso. Um and Declan Rice. I think they'll sign Declan Rice. Yeah, 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 yeah. Probably will to be fair. Um, They've got a tough running as Chelsea as well, to be fair. Apart from one game. I think I mean I think for Lampard though it's it's been obviously for a, a manager to have no pressure really no pressure a you're a legend but b you've had a transfer embargo yeah so you've not been able to do all he's had a crack at it and he's and he's, he's moved players and um, he's brought players in and moved them around and he thought well I'm trying stuff and he can, he can afford to do that next year and he's not going to be able to but on the flip side of that if he gets these players right that he's bringing in. I think next season he's going to be under a lot of pressure because when you do get to spend 100 million on a Werner or whoever you bring in, that pressure's on then. Yeah. But I, I do think they'll knock on the door next year. Or Chelsea. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> 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 I can, uh, very good. Very good. Um, 
But yeah, I think, I think Chelsea, they'll, they'll be there. But what's their, what's their games? The Sheffield United away to, today. Yeah. Big game. Then they're home to Norwich, gimme. They've got Man United FA Cup in between this. Then they've got Liverpool away. I know Liverpool have already won it, but mm. you say that they're, they're at home, aren't they? Yeah. Home. They want to get that target. Yeah, they want to get the 101, don't they? And then they're at home to Wolves last game of the season. That's a, that is a tough run in. And then with, with that FA Cup as well. Lampard, success season, wins FA Cup, gets Champions League. I think even if you just get Champions League, it's quite a success to be fair. Yeah, I do, true. I do. Because they were on about if they were finishing, um, if they were finishing just outside, I got it. Yeah, like, <laughs> if they were finishing like outside, six, yeah, like it, they would have had a good season. Because they'd be the bad one that he did. He only signed anybody else. Be there, the, no, I do. I do. I think champ, I think if you get top four, I think third will be very, very good achievement mm. for him. To be fair. So I think going into next season, there's going to be, I think, you know, with Man U's recruitments and, and they've got Mason Greenwood starting, Chelsea are, are buying, we know Liverpool will improve, we know Man City will improve um, at the back, um, they're the desperately needed. Will there be a surprise next year or do we think Liverpool, Man City, do we just see them two still or yeah, will probably. Chelsea and Man think, U have a sniff? I think, I, think your top, <laughs> I think your top four will be without Arsenal and Spurs. It'll be like the other four big ones. Okay. Mm-hmm. I, don't, I don't see Arsenal and Spurs coming anywhere near. You don't see Arsenal and Spurs getting anywhere yeah. near next year? Not even uh, with depends, on, depends on how Spurs spend in the summer. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I agree with that. I don't think Arsenal and Spurs will be there unless some really key signings are made. Mm. So, um, but yeah, so we'll be back next week. We'll talk about, we're going to maybe talk about Leeds because Leeds may be promoted by, by them, maybe. Hopefully. Well, we won't be back. We won't we'll be by Thursday. It could be Sunday. By, by, by the weekend, yeah. by the next podcast uh, that you'll see. Uh, Instagrammers, go on YouTube, share us away. And uh, yeah, we'll be back with some more review shows. But for now, we are out. See you in a bit.